you very much. Uh, we're hearing that the former England cricket captain, Bob Willis, has died at the age of 70. He will perhaps be best remembered for an astonishing performance during the Ashes series in 1981 when he took eight wickets in one innings against Australia. England went on to win that series 3-1. He was an attacking and tireless fast bowler and he represented uh, his country in uh, 90 uh, tests and uh, he took uh, 800 and uh, England 11 in uh, uh, August 2018 on the occasion of England's 1000th test. The announcement has been made by Sky Sports for whom he works as a commentator. Uh, 400 tests in total when he represented England. Let's hear about his life from our sports correspondent, Joe Wilson. It is 1981 and Bob Willis is bowling fast. Willis has taken his sixth wicket. The Headingley Ashes test. The game Australia was certain to win. The match England seized. He's got a touch on it, he's gone. Bob Willis forced his weary limbs into a supreme performance. He took eight wickets in Australia's second innings, his expression glaring at the world, a man completely in the zone. And he's got it! This day made his reputation. While the excitement whirled around him, Willis remained locked in his mission. The reluctant hero. The decisive over was the one that you bowled and got uh, Kim Hughes and Graham Yellowbird. That last over before lunch, wasn't it? Yeah, well, I told Mark I was a bit too old to be bowling into the wind, so I better bowl the other end. He first played for England in the early 1970s. Willis endured surgery and frequent pain to play 90 test matches in all. He was captain for 18 of them. He was a team man, but also always his own man. And he's bowling on the back foot and a historic moment for Bob Willis because his fifth wicket and also his 300th victim in Test Match cricket. Robert George Willis officially added Dylan to his middle names. The resemblance was not accidental. The bowler idolised the singer-songwriter. Willis voiced his own lyrics in a long broadcasting career. He was never shy to express his opinion on Sky Sports television, often employing a dry delivery. One of the most ridiculous selections I've seen in recent times. At his playing peak, Bob Willis stood above the crowd and against the odds. Bowl him, it's all over, and it is one of the most fantastic victories ever known. Bob Willis, eight wickets, a fabulous performance. One performance among so many that proved anything is possible. And that is the dream at the heart of all sport. Joe Wilson reporting on the cricketing career of Bob Willis, who's died at the age of 70. Let's speak to the editor of The Cricketer, Simon Hughes. Simon, how does Bob Willis rate amongst all the greats? Very highly. Uh, very fast bowler, very um, aggressive, passionate uh, not always rapid, but uh, on his day, as fast as anybody in the world, anybody who takes 300 test wickets, especially in, in the old days, before they played so many tests, is, is phenomenal. And be able to sustain that, uh, that speed with really quite a spindly body. You know, he had all sorts of injury problems during his career. And I, was a, I attempted to be a fast bowler as well. I know how much it hurts every day. And he just put that beside him. Uh, he he came in as hard as he possibly could for England with that with that passion and determination, which of course he then brought to the broadcasting world as well. Uh, he was a compelling guy to 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 play with or against, and uh, of course he was nicknamed Goose uh, because of his sort of jerky head as he ran into bowl. Uh, he had a sort of idiosyncratic action and run up, which people mimicked, you know, almost sort of mercilessly, but. He was uh, happy with that. He was just happy to be a contributing member of the team and a, a lion-hearted character. Those of us old enough to remember 1981 will, of course, uh, cherish the memories of the, uh, the Ashes win over Australia when he played a, a very fundamental role despite the injuries that he was suffering. 
In fact, he nearly didn't get picked for that test match at Headingley because he'd been sort of low on form and he'd been no balling, he'd been overstepping the line a little bit. Uh, but Mike really decided at the last moment, you know, he, we've got to have him because he's that kind of cutting edge which England needed. And everybody remembers that test match for Mike, Ian Botham's amazing 149 not out, which kind of saved England from an innings defeat. But it was Bob Willis who, who won the game with that incredible eight wickets and actually, I still have that image of him after the final wicket running off the ground so fast that no one could catch him. He was he was a man on a mission. He almost looked as if he was on drugs. You know, the way he bowled that that afternoon, it was the passion and the desire to win a game for his team, which w was, you know, too much for even the Australians. Yeah. And he took you mentioned the eight wickets, but for only 43 runs. I mean, yes, I mean, it's, that's it, right. I and. and yeah, yeah, quite. And I mean, England, uh, Australia were only chasing about 129, I think, to win. So it was only a low score, but somehow he managed to, to bowl them all out. And without that, in a way, that whole both of Ashes, great Ashes series of 1981 would never have existed because Australia would have finished up winning the series comfortably. And just looking at his statistics, there were uh, 90 tests... And he took uh, 325 yes. runs in that time with a with a, a bowling average of just over 25. I mean, even up against today's players who get the chance to play far more, they still stack up well, don't they? Well, and also, uh, you know, you forget that a guy like that in those days had to play a lot of county cricket as well. He started with Surrey and then he went to Warwickshire and you didn't get any time off. I mean, nowadays, you know, players, the Jimmy Anderson and the Stuart Broads of this world hardly play any county cricket. So they play for England and then they get a week off. But uh, in those days, Bob Willis would be charging in for England one day and then a couple of days later charging in for Warwickshire. So he took, I think, nearly 900 wickets for Warwickshire as well. So it was a phenomenal career. Yeah, no wonder his knees hurt, eh? Um, but when, <laughs> yeah, it, when, it, when it came to his commentary, he, was, he took no prisoners. He was very, very direct, which upset a lot of people. But he sounds like he had a very dry wit off the pitch. He was a, yeah, I mean, he was a very funny man, took, told great stories, many against himself off the field. Uh, you know, he was a great sort of wise, wise cracker. But... Um, it, it was, I think, the, the punditry, he set a new sort of tone, a new level of it, really, because he was so forthright and brave, actually, in some of the things he said, which were uncomfortable truths, but they needed to be said. But it, it was usually him that had the guts to say it. And he often looked a bit curmudgeonly on telly, you know, sort of a bit sort of turned down mouth and a bit grumpy. But it was only because he really cared about England and he wanted them to play well. And they deserved, usually, the, the shellackings that he gave them. They deserved. When someone played really well, he gave them full credit. And, you know, away from the TV cameras, he was a smiley and, and a, you know, great company. No age, is it? 70. Simon Hughes, editor of The Cricketer, thank you so much for talking to us. And just to say that uh, Bob Willis's uh, family have released a short statement and they say, we are heartbroken to lose our beloved Bob, who is an incredible husband, father, brother and grandfather. He made a huge impact on everybody he knew and we will miss him terribly.